Welcome back. So since we find ourselves with a little bit of extra time on our hands, I thought we would take a look at one of the things that nobody in reselling ever really wants to talk about. Heavens, we don't even want to think about it. And that is, what about the items that you just can't sell? I call them my turds. So, we'll talk about this when we come back. I have on the table in front of me some just a variety of items that I have some issues with because I don't think they're going to sell. In some cases, I know for a fact they're not going to sell. This charming little patriotic emblem stoneware mug has been in my Etsy shop for I think almost three months and it's not selling. Currently, it's listed at my cost, which I, I think I've got this at $9 including, no, I'm sorry, I've got it at $7 including free shipping. And given the fact that if this is 15 ounces, if this goes out to California, that shipping bill is $5 and change. And then you've got the packing materials, the boxes, the Etsy fees, and what I paid for it. So it's either at or slightly below my cost. Well, at the moment, my Etsy shop is its like old mother Hubbard's cupboard. It's just, it is bare. So I need to get my button gear and start listing things. But the first thing I'm going to do is delete this one. This is going into a box this is going back to Goodwill. So how do I determine that that's, what, that's what's going on? It's simply not selling. There are a lot of ways, and you can do this whether, regardless of what platform you're on. If you have multiple listings, whether they're listings with eBay, whether they're listings in an Etsy store, no matter where they are, if you have more than one listing, and the other listings are getting attention and they're selling, you know people are checking out your listings. And people will very often, absolutely on Etsy, sometimes on eBay, eBay's the sort of very often, they'll look at your other items. Especially if you offer free shipping or combined shipping, people wanna know if there's anything else they can pick up, save themselves a little money. Uh, the free shipping offer just tends to attract attention anyway. So if the other things are selling and one item isn't, and it's been there, it's been there, and it's been there. In this case, I think I've dropped the price on this twice. It's not going anywhere. I need to stop wasting my time and just get rid of it. Now, I could leave it up longer. Um, just wait until the listing expires because it doesn't cost me any more to do that. But rather than worry about a piece that really doesn't, it doesn't even deserve the time it takes to notice it in my Etsy shop, I'm just going to accept defeat and move on. Um, do I do that with everything right across the board? No, not always. As I say, there are factors that are involved in this. Are people seeing it? Are they seeing all your listings? Well, with Etsy, if your other listings are selling and one or two pieces are not, even though everything else is going, those one or two pieces are problematic. So, you need to take a look at them. My first position is always to reduce the price. I generally don't put very much of a price on most of 
the stuff that I sell. You know, basically, as I've said, it's enough to cover the giveaways. It's it's enough to cover shipping on on, you know, whatever it is I'm sending out there into the world. That's about it. I'm not looking at that as a major profit making undertaking. But still, I don't want to take a loss either. At the very least, I have to break even. And at best, I'm going to need to, to get some kind of profit on it because what happens if there are pieces on which I don't break even? And let me give you an example of that. What happens if something goes out and it's damaged in transit? I have to refund the person's money and the item is lost. So that's why you've always got to build at least a little profit in because eventually there will be losses. If there's no profits to cover the loss, the loss comes out of your pocket. And no one is doing this just for the sake of accruing losses. Uh, at least not for me. It is not a tax write-off. So, that little cup, I've given it all the time and attention I'm going to, and I imagine by the time you see this video, it's going to be gone. This, however, uh, this is a little lusterware bowl. It's not marked. I, I'm not sure. Yes, it's not marked. This has not been up as long as the little cup, and I do have some room to reduce the price on this, which I'm probably going to do either you know, tonight or tomorrow, see if I can't make it a little more attractive, find it a nice home, because it's a good piece, and I have more confidence in this piece than the little cup. The cup's been there long enough to tell me it's not selling. This piece hasn't, not quite yet. So that's going to get a tiny bit of a reprieve for now. This one, however, is not. This is, it's a little peach plate, um, European lusterware, very pretty little thing, in my opinion, very pretty. But I got this um, mostly because I thought it would be suitable for a clock or a tidbit tray and never actually found either um, the plates I would need because with a tidbit tray you need additional complementary plates to go with it. Um, never ended up doing a clock with it because what I didn't notice at the time was, here, you can see it here, this lip is sort of curved up, which will make it difficult to accommodate the hands or numbers. This is probably going to be gifted back to Goodwill, um, and I have no problem doing that. That's, like I say, it's probably not even going to make it into the shop in the first place. I'm going to self-select it out of the pool early. Um, These are pieces, yes dear, that are not even going to Goodwill. Okay, scoot along. Yeah. Okay, excuse me. Come on, come on over here. Yes, okay, okay, I've got you. All right, sorry about that. Apparently someone felt he was being ignored. Yes, I know. You are a YouTube star. Everybody knows it. Yes, the camera's rolling. He needs to be in the shop. Okay, go ahead. Go play. As I was saying, these are not even going to be gifted to Goodwill. Um, I did not notice when I picked these up. They are both damaged. They are both pretty little pieces. And if only one had been damaged, I might say, yeah, well, actually, if only one had been damaged, I would definitely look at these as tidbit tray toppers. Would that be sensational or what? They're both damaged. So instead of turning them over to Goodwill, uh, which 
is essentially using them to throw out my trash for me. They are just gone. It's a shame, but that was my bad. I, I should have checked them more carefully. I didn't. I do believe that it, the seller should have made a note because damaged and repaired means the seller knows they were damaged. Damaged and not repaired means perhaps the seller never noticed. So they're not even getting donated. They're hitting the trash. But let me show you another piece that I'm doing something different with. Now, you saw these pieces recently. I picked these up in Emmitsburg. And uh, I, I said at the time, the sugar and the creamer were priced separately. I thought that... Um, I thought that the price for one was the price for both. One was $4, one was $10. I do not recall which was which, but that's what I thought I was paying. Turns out I was paying $14. Again, my bad. But take a look at that nice chunk out of the lid. And no, that is not uh, a spot for a spoon. That is actual damage, which I didn't know because the lid was taped down. In a situation like this, I'm going to pull the receipt. I am going to pull up my phone and in my little note section, I'm going to make a note of that seller's identification code. And I am never buying anything from them again. I don't care if they have the Hope Diamond for 50 cents because when you tape a lid down and you know you're concealing damage, that's a little over the top for me. However, I am going to list this set in my Etsy shop. Um, I'm probably going to list it for about, I don't know, 8 or $10. Someone might be interested for it in it for that price. Um, I'm certainly going to end up taking a loss on it, no question about that. But it was my mistake picking it up. So I will need to take the loss. Someone else might be interested. They might not be troubled by that damage. I don't know. But I can certainly say it's not the sort of thing I'm comfortable selling. I don't like selling damaged items. I usually only do it if I think the piece has some redeeming value. In this case, it's a perfectly good creamer. It's a perfectly good sugar bowl. The lid is damaged. I, I, can, I can justify that, mostly because it's entirely possible someone else is going to look at it and see it as, as I do. There's just a really beautiful piece of Japanese lusterware. Um, it will not stay up long. It, that, that's one of those things that if it sells quickly, fine. If it doesn't, I know it's going to bother me every moment it's up there. And every moment I'm going to be tempted to just pull it, bring it to goodwill, and just give them my apologies. Let them know it's damaged. And if they can get a couple of dollars for it, so be it. But again... I, I, the reason I would do that with this and not with these is because they are both broken. I can't even offer someone a single good piece here. And so that's why that one is going aside. This piece is also damaged. It has a crack. Let me see if I can show you the crack. Yeah, I think you can see it. I got such a good deal on this. Um, I got an entire set of, this is blue and white luster wear, that I was not at all concerned about this. I probably will list this in my Etsy shop at a discount because of the crack, and it's going to have to be a considerable discount because it's still serviceable. You can still use it. You can stick jewelry or uh, Q-tips or I'm, I'm thinking this is a bathroom piece that whatever, maybe bath salts in it, something like that. And as long as you put that crack toward the wall, 
nobody's going to know. Someone might be interested in that because it's not a, an entire chunk missing out of it. So I will consider that. Again, if that doesn't sell quickly, it is going to goodwill. Part of that is because I don't want to develop a reputation as an Etsy seller who trades in damaged goods. I'm not saying there's not a market for it, but I just don't want that to be my market. So, um, let's see. Oh, this. This is something I'm getting a little more creative with. This is a lovely Japanese tray in the Noritake style. We have the two cruets, oil and vinegar, and we have the little matching mustard pot. Let me stick them in there so you can see everybody. And there we go. Um, problem. Okay, problem number one is this cruet is badly damaged and it was not very skillfully repaired. Oops. Problem number two. The lid to the mustard pot damaged very skillfully repaired, but damaged nonetheless. Now, I might be able to deal with the concept of one damaged piece, but not two. So what's going to happen is this damaged lid is going away. This tray and this little pot, here we go, are going to turn into a little caddy of some sort, a little, you know, tiered caddy, tidbit tray. I don't know. Um, that could hold all kinds of little goodies, maybe Q-tips, who knows. Go into somebody's bathroom. And I will list one of these cruets on eBay. And the other one will simply be a freebie to go along with it. Um, that is, by the way, a creative way of dealing with damaged items, especially an item like this that could be used as a standalone piece. Um, it has a little O on it for oil. The other one that's damaged has a V for vinegar, but it's very subtle. Someone might want this for an entirely different purpose. I'm, that could be anything right up to and including a perfume bottle. It's got the stopper. So that's how I'm going to do it. It's like, here's your bottle. That's what you're buying. And if you want his friend, he's yours for free. And I don't have to feel guilty about it because I'm not actually selling the damaged item. I'm just including it as a gift. If somebody wants it, be my guest. And I've done that with things before. We talked about this a while back. Um, Geisha wear. I have this entire stack. Wait. This entire stack. Because I have picked up a lot of geisha wear lately. Uh, it tends to be sold in lots. In general, you don't find a single plate. You find a set of six or eight. And most of the time, they're not actually a set. Um, it is very difficult to determine whether or not these are matched pieces. Because, as I've said before, the painting can be very sloppy. But, and they use the same colors. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Are we? Yes. There we go. Look at that. Same? Nope. You've got the same colors, but you have a different design here. And it might look very similar, but it is not. Um, I think we have a bridge in one and a pagoda in the other. Oh, and this one probably is twice the weight and thickness of this one. But I have been working to get some better quality geisha wear because I... I find that a lot of people really want it. But better quality geisha wear is 
acquired sort of one good piece along with three bad ones. And the last time I had a bunch of bad geisha wear, someone had contacted me when I said I was throwing it out and he said he wanted it. I was, pay the shipping and it's yours. Because it was simply not of a quality that I considered suitable for offering for sale. Um, that may end up happening with these pieces or I may put so many of them in a pile that I can legitimately say here is 92 dishes for a very low price and it'll be worth somebody's while to buy it. Um, and that's how you do it creatively. Um, we can, as in the case with our cruets, we can give away the damaged piece with the good piece. We can gather things up into a sufficiently large set so that it might be attractive to a buyer because it's a set. Um, this is an example. These are great little Japanese plates. They are in the Noritake style, but they have that swan. They also, let me see if I can find it. There we go. There is a chip um, right here in this plate. And then a little, that little white spot, that is a wear mark where the paint has been worn off. This is the only one that's chipped. Most of the others have little wear marks. I got them because I thought if the wear marks were not too bad, you know, if it was just very minor, I might actually take them and use them uh, for tidbit trays because here, this one is pretty good. This is probably one of the best of the pieces here. There we go. Let's try to get that. Get the horizon level so you don't get seasick. I think that would be a great little piece on a tidbit tray. It does have some obvious wear, but it's not too bad. That's what I bought these for, and I got them very inexpensively because they were so worn. A set like this, six matching plates, even though they're worn, even though one of them does have a chip, that might be something that could be sold simply because there are so many of them. It's enough to say, well, this is a full set. If you kept the price low enough, someone might be interested. Someone might actually be interested in using them as saucers for uh, terracotta plant pots or something like that. It would be very nice to have really beautiful saucers just catching water or down to feed the cat. Um, I, I shouldn't say that in front of the cat. Now he thinks he's going to be fed out of dirty china. All right. But it's another way to dispose of the undisposable items you have. In general, my advice, if you are faced with something that you either cannot, or will not, or should not sell, um, the, the cannot is right here. These are kind of would not, should not. Um, again, as I say, even if I send them to Goodwill, I'm handing somebody my problem and who knows what kind of flack they could get if somebody bought them, found out they were damaged and then came back in and yelled. Um, there are all kinds of reasons for not wanting to sell an item. As I say, for mine, it's damage. Um, other things, you get a piece of pottery and uh, some kinds of pottery uh, have a lot of fakes out there. Um, and Joss, Jocelyn knows them all, by the way. So if you ever want to find out who's, who is counterfeited left and right, talk to her. If you put out a piece that you know someone might eventually resell as an original, then that's something you shouldn't sell. You know, you might sell it as, uh, as a reproduction or a counterfeit, but if you think somebody else might not be so um, 
might not be so diligent in terms of their disclaimers, then you shouldn't do it. You know, and none of us should be responsible for putting counterfeits out there. And I know a case could be made for, hey, once it leaves your hands, it leaves your hands. But I don't know. I mean, you know, we all have to make those decisions for ourselves. For me, that would be something that I wouldn't feel comfortable selling. In general, when you have these little turds and you know they're not going anywhere, the smartest move is to try to cut your losses as soon as you realize the pieces are not going to move. Keeping them around for any length of time is not a good idea because, of course, you, you don't want your shop, your listings, to be associated in people's minds with stuff they don't want. You want it to be associated with stuff they do want. So you always need to remember that. A piece like this, nobody wants it. It's hurting my brand. I know, you thought, old woman, she doesn't even know what a brand is. Yes, she does. It doesn't do me any good to continue to list a piece like that. And in some people's minds, it could be, it could be poisoning the well. They could look at this and just say, oh, let's move on. It's that nasty cup again. You need to consider that. So... What about a piece like this? This is a piece, as I said, I have some confidence in. What if it doesn't sell? In this case, it would go to Goodwill. If it were another piece, um, for example, um, if it were our lovely little creamer here that just wouldn't sell, I would take it down, so remove the listing, wait a few months, and relist it. Because sometimes you find out the hard way that you are trying to sell Easter eggs at Christmas time. Sometimes there are variations and fluctuations in the market that you just don't know about. Um, especially when you're selling items to people who are probably much more avid collectors than you are. Um, a piece like this might appeal to lusterware collectors who would have totally different set of criteria than I than I do or that I am aware of. For example, nice peach and it's got yellow and gray. So what I may not know about is that the overall lusterware market, which I cannot possibly cover myself, uh, because it would include antique shops, flea markets, yard sales, thrift stores, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, God only knows. It might have recently had a lot of pieces like this sell. It may be that pieces like this are just passe for the moment. Take it off the market, let the market get flooded with the blue and white luster wear, then you bring this one back on. Uh, so sometimes it's nothing but timing. But other times it's just a matter of of accepting that something is not selling and cutting your losses. For the most part, as thrifters, we're very lucky. Thrift stores, yard sales, the, the low-priced items that we are getting from uh, the antique malls, you know, three, four, five dollars. If you have a piece and you don't have very much invested in it, then you don't have very much to lose. Take it off bring it to goodwill. And remember, leaving a piece like this in my shop, I have to weigh what I'm going to get if I sell it. And remember, at this point, it's nothing. I'm, I'm breaking even. I'm recouping my losses, you know, which is the cost of the cup, basically. You have to weigh that against the, I don't want to say damage. Damage is too strong a word. Um, the the poor impression, put it that way, that's a little softer. The poor impression that having the same unsaleable cup day after day, week after week, month after month in your shop will create among your buyers. Um, for me, it's not worth a dollar. It can go back to the thrift store. And for most of us, because that's where we're getting our items, 
ask yourself, is it really worth the dollar, the two dollars, the three dollars? If it's not, pack it up, re-gift it to Goodwill or Salvation Army or whoever you bought it from. It will just go through the motions again and somebody else might have better luck with it. Anyway, I thought you might like to hear my theory on what to do with the turds. Remember, we all have them. We all face this question. And we all have to make up our own minds. What is our limit? At what point will I no longer invest in that mug? As I say, my point has come. Very quickly, heads up on future giveaways. We've got to wrap up our present batch of giveaways. Audio the Photo Mom Kitty is choosing winners for the last two. This is another one of the pieces made by our friend Randy from the shattered rose medallion china that was destroyed when the schoolhouse roof collapsed. She made this beautiful little, it's like a, a woven chain with beads on it. I, I, I just, she said, I love the daylight side of that. That is going to be a future giveaway. I'm going to show off her pieces till I have no more left to show off. So get used to it. It'll be a while. I'll be wearing rose medallion china around my neck. All right. Have a great day. And I will see you all tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Because I'm posting videos till we get through this. I'm going to be here to keep you company. What else have I got to do? See you later.